Hm. Good morning, dear friends. Have we got sound? Thank you. Good morning to those of you joining us on Facebook and YouTube. Um, once again today, I'm using Wi-Fi for the connection, so I hope it stays stable. The, uh, the new Ethernet cable is coming today, they say. <coughs> it is Tuesday, June the 9th. I am, I am, interesting statement, I am. <laughs> this that calls itself Robert Beatty is coming to you from the west coast of the United States, Beaverton, Oregon. I'm about, how far is it? I think it's 12 miles from PIMC, the Portland Insight Meditation Community across the river, down the hill and across the river and up the hill. So here we are, sitting, being. Do you remember that first moment when you were conscious this morning? There is a discrete moment when self-reflective consciousness reappears. <coughs> See, I got a little note. My sound is a little low. I think I have a little more gain here. One, two, three, before it turns bright red. This is a test. That should be a lot better. Now, oh my goodness, there's a lot. Whoa, there we go. There's the clipping. All right, that should be better. Yes, Heather, thank you. All right. Ah, well. You might have guessed or noticed it's raining here. <laughs> I'm going to read two poems this morning from this beautiful little book, The First Free Women. Awake Women at the Time of the Buddha. <laughs> the first one. Hero. Vira Hero. Truly strong among those who think themselves strong. Truly unafraid among those who hide their fear. A hero among those who talk of heroes. Don't be fooled by outward signs, lifting heavy things or picking fights with weaker opponents, or running headfirst into battle. A real hero walks the path to its end, then shows others the way. Truly strong among those who think themselves strong, truly unafraid among those who hide their fear. A hero among those who talk of heroes. Don't be fooled by outward signs, lifting heavy things or picking fights with weaker opponents, and running headfirst into battle. A real hero walks the path to its end, then shows others the way. Mita, friend. Full of trust, you left home. And soon learned to walk the path, making yourself a friend to everyone and making everyone a friend. When the whole world is your friend, fear will find no place to call home. And when you make the mind your friend, you'll know what trust really means. Listen, I have followed the path of friendship to its end, and I can say with absolute certainty, it will lead you home. Full of trust, you left home and soon learned to walk the path, making yourself a friend to everyone and making everyone a friend. 
When the whole world is your friend, fear will find no place to call home. And when you make the mind your friend, you'll know what trust really means. Listen, I have followed this path of friendship to its end, and I can say with absolute certainty, it will lead you home. I have followed this path of friendship to its end, and I can say with absolute certainty, it will lead you home. I hope you can hear the rain, it's really quite lovely. The world is inherently unstable. Everything this side of the Big Bang is nothing but change. In what shall we take refuge? The weather is as it is in the world. Getting a little more challenging, it seems. Or a lot more challenging. So let's remind ourselves of the refuge in the Buddha, the Dharma, and the Sangha. And to reflect what that really means to us. What does it mean? It's one thing to have it as a cute little song. And it flows along and sounds nice. But what would it mean to really take refuge in the Buddha, the Dharma, and the Sangha? We take refuge in lots of things. From alcohol, to drugs, to overworking, to money, to relationships, to children, to vacations. It was a siren. Somebody's life is changing. I took refuge in being awake. And what is discovered with that awakeness and in the community with which I come. I take refuge in the Buddha, the one who shows me the way in this life. Namo Buddhaya, Namo Buddhaya, Namo Buddhaya. I take refuge in the Dharma, the way of understanding and love. Namo Dharmaya, Namo Dharmaya, Dharmaya, Namo Dharmaya. <laughs> the community of mindful harmony Namo Sangaya Namo Sangaya Namo Sangaya
a lot of the sirens that are distracting me. There was a siren the other day, I was on a Zoom call. And there was a, an ambulance and a fire truck at a home just down the street. So, let us land here. In the privilege of warmth and being dry. I have less than a millimeter, less than a quarter of a millimeter of fabric between myself and the rain. Creates quite a symphony. One could easily take hearing as the primary object in such a circumstance. The pointillist sound of rain sings beautifully of impermanence. Ah, Nietzsche. When the mind wanders off, come back to hearing, or you could take up the baseline of life, the coming and going of the breath. The breath has been so dependable. Ever since you were born, Each breath has its beginning, its rising to fullness. Its decline, its vanishing.
allowing there to be room for all the visitors sleepiness, restlessness, agitation anxiety ease, comfort confidence loneliness contentment assuming the place at the center of it all in mindful awareness Recognizing the frequency with which you disappear into some story or another. The great song of the self, I, 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 me, 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 mine, 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 weaves itself countless times a day into being. Where is this sense of I am? Coming home to the sensations of breathing in and breathing out. Coming home to the sounds, that we call rain. Coming home to now.
time after time. Awareness winks out, disappears. And there's an old story, a worry, a plan, a commentary on one's well-being or on a difficulty that is posing itself in life. And then the mystery occurs. Awareness, mindfulness. This waking up is the most natural thing in the world. Or, more accurately, it is as natural as everything else in the world. As natural as the rain ocean waves, bird song. It's part of the world. It's the world waking up. Sometimes it helps with concentration to Count breaths, breathing in one, breathing out two, up to ten, and then start over. If you get lost on the way, simply start over. Or using the mind to note rising, rising, falling, falling, or perhaps you're attending to breathing at the nostrils, in which case it could be in, in, out, out. Or noticing the mind wandering, wandering, wandering. Returning, returning. If your mind is one troubled frequently by worry, it's useful to note worry. Worry, worry, or planning, planning, or If there's a particular emotive state or mood, like depressed or anxious or confused, call it what it is. It's a mental state. Taking refuge in being awake.
investing yourself fully in the breath. Dive into the breath. Climb into the breath as you would a hammock. Let everything else go. Let all of your worries fall away. All of your plans. Let all of your relationships fall away. Allow liking and disliking to come and go like breezes. As you rest more and more fully in this present moment. This moment is exactly as it is. The self construct has a habit of placing itself against reality.
What if we were to surrender into just being how and who we are? Imperfect. Sometimes very awake, sometimes very asleep. These next few words are from a wise, a wise man of the 20th century. A man who made a huge difference to the world. Mr. Rogers. I know how important it is to give up our expectations of perfection in any area of our lives. I know I've tried hard to do this, and yet I know that every once in a while the old pattern emerges. Maybe if I could make at least one proper segment of the program, and I find myself in the trap again. That doesn't mean we can't produce highly satisfying moments for ourselves and others, but it is important to give up, maybe daily, trying to be perfect. Of course, I think we want it so strongly because we reason that if we are perfect, if we do a perfect job, we will be perfectly lovable. What a heavy burden. Thank God we don't have to earn every little bit of love that comes our way. I aspire to love and accept myself exactly as I am in this moment. Please soften into the reality of now. Perhaps pick up the great I love you mantra with your own name at the end. You know your failings and obsessions and compulsions and addictions better than anybody. You probably exaggerate them to yourself more than anybody. Having set out on the path, we can use even meditation to further feel bad about ourselves. I should be further along, I should be more awake, I should be more enlightened. What if that were all noticed for what it is? Beliefs fantasies, the story of a self. I love you with your own name at the end. Wish yourself well. I meet people these days who feel inadequate. I'm not out marching. I'm not I'm not doing enough. And we do this to the point of utter exhaustion. <clears throat> the path home is right here and right now. This this moment of birdsong, this moment of breathing in, this sound of a raindrop, wish yourself well.
and dedicating our practice. May all beings everywhere share in the merits of our practice. May every mindful breath benefit all beings. May my actions of mind, speech, and body be dedicated in wakefulness to all beings. <clears throat> Please now bringing awareness into the face and the eyes. And maybe let's include the whole body. The body from the toes to the knees to the pelvis and the chest and arms and hands. This mysterious mass of life. and then to the eyes, and then the mystery of the opening of eyes. How does that happen? And then seeing, and we can see each other with the eyes of blessing, the eyes of gratitude. There is a subtle tyranny to the self-improvement mind. Maybe sometimes it's subtle like a sledgehammer. Notice if you have that, I have to be better. I always have to be better. My observation is that for those who maintain a mindfulness practice, our characters really do become better. Our behavior becomes better. But not through force or even really through effort. It's through uh, awareness doing its natural growing. Speaking of which, my new raised beds, the soil, <laughs> The soil came as 50% dirt, 40% compost, and 10% sand. And to that I added more compost, fertilizer, and worm castings. And it's, it's bizarre. You know, you, there's a saying, it's like everything's so slow, it's like watching carrots grow. My carrots are growing visibly day to day. It's quite remarkable. And I think we're the same when we, when we offer the, for the fine soil of the Dharma and our capacity of coming together and, and clarifying our intention of awakening. I, uh, Jim and I will need to leave today at exactly, or close day, exactly, precisely, eight o'clock. It's like Switzerland. Die Zeit ist genau. This time is exactly. Anyway, we have to leave at eight. We have a board meeting, um, PIMC board meeting. If these broadcasts are of life giving to you and you would like to help keep them going, please check out the link on the chat and you can go there and make a contribution to the important insight meditation community, which is a freestanding autonomous nonprofit that uh, we don't have the mother church or anything like that to rely on or be dominated by so I think that's all the announcing and speaking I want to do because I want to leave some time to hear what's happening in the world out there so if you have something you'd like to share or speak or ask Please 
unmute yourself and off we'll go. I'm not sure my sound is set properly. Please bear with me a moment. Scarlet, that's not going to work. Uh, I'll put... There, I think. Yep. There we go. I think that'll work. Since we're so quiet, I'm going to ask Sherry, how are you doing? You're still muted, and it's okay if you don't want to respond, it's absolutely fine. Don't want to put you on the spot. This is Carmen. Carmen, hello, my dear. <laughs> hello there. Hello, Sangha. Hmm. Uh, I. Oh, oh, Sherry, we'll come oh, back sorry. to you, okay? Okay. I what? have a, a kind of a dilemma. I've been. I have family that um, believe that this COVID nineteen is a hoax. <laughs> they believe that um, they're down in the Bay Area. They are um, Trump supporters. Mm. And my nephew was in the paper because uh, he was at a restaurant with all his construction buddies calling this a hoax, the COVID-19. That's one of the greatest American hoax. And it was in the paper, the San, uh, San Jose Mercury. So my brother sent it to me and... Uh, I am I don't know how to respond I don't know you know mindful speech I'm trying to I haven't done anything but I'm finding during this time with uh, with Black Lives Matters and with this COVID that I'm becoming more separated from my family uh, that have different different ways of being and uh, so I just uh, if you have any suggestions for me. Hmm. Thank you. Looks like you're sad. Yeah. There is someone in my life that is of a similar mind. Not that far but um, such that conversation about those topics is really impossible and I've taken the position of just not conversing about anything like that which then means there's less conversation but there's no way I can there's <laughs> You could become more educated and more clear and you could convert your brother. Not likely. You know. So, there's a great sadness in it, but there's a, um, there's a letting go of the family of origin, which, you know, is part of almost all monastic traditions. 
you know, people go into the monastery and they change their name. And that one of the reasons is it's about differentiating oneself from the family of origin. And um, so one can still, one can stay loving, but there's a whole lot of connection that isn't there. And um, a long time ago, um, really my second therapist <laughs> uh, said to me I was struggling to get a little clarity around my family where I was so codependently enmeshed and, and he told me this story he said uh, he was he was he was of a Christian slant and he said you remember that story in the Bible where Jesus uh, raised Lazarus from the dead and I didn't of course but I've since gone back and read it and he said well the the apostles come along there's a house where Lazarus is inside and he's died and they're all crammed around it and the only way in and this is an odd piece of the story the only way in is for the apostles to to take the roof tiles off and they lower Jesus in and he's going about his miracle of raising Lazarus from the dead and one of the apostles says, your mother and sisters are outside. And his response was really odd. He said, I have no mother and sisters. I am going about my father's work. And I, what an interesting perspective on differentiation from the family of origin. Not making any sense intuitively. That so many of us go so far away. <laughs> Sometimes, <laughs> when doubt comes up in me, and which is not so uncommon, uh, I I say to myself, "What is little Bobby Beatty from Lachine, Quebec, doing?" talking to 60 or 100 people as though he knew something. I mean, give me a break. <laughs> this is little Bobby Beatty from that alcoholic family in Montreal. And, and so we do fall far from our families sometimes. And it, if we get involved in spiritual practice, the gap gets greater and greater, though it doesn't mean we, we can still love profoundly. But there's a sadness in it because we can't go there for nourishment in the way we really would like. Mm. Mm. Yeah, that's and that's the, the sadness that I'm feeling is uh, is that loss, um, and it's I think it's always been there. It's just as magnified during these current times. Yeah, and these are very polarizing times. Yeah. yeah. So remember, during the Civil War, families split down the middle and fought each other over the same ideas. So thank you. Thank you. Nice picture behind you. Yeah, Mount Rainier. I knew. <laughs> so where'd you go? Sherry, you want to speak? Yes, thank you for thinking of me and remembering Robert. So, so many people. Depending on you every morning. Uh, I did get a call from my sister's daughter and we had a good conversation. Um, uh, she gave me particulars and uh, I asked her what I could do. Um, I had thought about writing a letter. After you told me I could break the rules, I thought, okay, I will do that. <laughs> What, are you a grown-up or something, breaking the rules? Cool. <laughs> she said, oh, yeah, that would be fine. And she said, um, you can email it or you can uh, uh, to her phone, and then, but you have to tell me that uh, you've done that because she's not really doing anything with her phone anymore, and she's, can't, she can barely speak because of the tumor pressing on her bronchial tubes. So, uh. so we go ahead and... and um, I, I was able, I wanted to share with her the understanding of how my sister must feel with the, 
the concern about not being able to breathe because uh, that's what happened to my daughter who died from ALS, but on a day of her choosing, her fear was not being able to breathe. So I got off me until you know, I've had enough medication that I, uh, I won't know that I can't breathe anymore. So we had a, a good conversation that she was going to um, uh, hang up from me and call my brother in uh, Montana. Carmen, I just wanted to respond to you. I know, I know what you're feeling because this rift with my sister started over, over the 2016 election. I had never voted in the United States since I left there so many years ago, married a Canadian. I was so appalled at the thought of Trump getting an office, I, I had to find out how to vote and I managed to do it and then I called my sister and said, guess what, I'm so proud of myself. I was able to find out how and where to vote and oh, she said, I suppose you're voting for Hillary. And it just, from then on, we did not have mm. a good relationship. And then she tattled to my brother, who's, he's the eldest, he's 92 or 93. And he wrote me a letter and sent me a brochure from printed by Citizens United. Mm -hmm. And he wrote me a letter and said, I love you. And, uh, you know, I, you're probably because you don't maybe get the, the news up there in Quadra Island. <laughs> uh, I just want you to know I love you anyway, but, you know, but, but, this, this, this. And I, I had no idea how to respond to that. I couldn't believe that both of them were in the Trump corner. And I I thought about responding and what could I possibly say? And then I thought, I'm not even going to address it. There's no, you know, there's no point. Mm -hmm. So he won't talk on the phone. We only have correspondence in letters just a few times during the year, but it's, and, and he, I don't know him anymore. He, we haven't mm -hmm. lived anywhere near each other for so many years. He's not the same person. So there's that big separation that you were speaking about. I take refuge in the Sangha. <laughs> you know, when people want to, when we humans, when we want to get over our addictions, we go to places where people who are getting over their addictions hang out. We create new friendships. When we want to get over our suffering and attachments, we go to where people are doing that, and that's spiritual community. And it doesn't mean we don't stay in relationship and love our families, if we can. But it does mean that we realize that, um, this is kind of a heresy, but um, our deepest connections in a lifetime may well not be with our family of origin. Um, my, here's the teariness. My relationship with Ruth Dennison was with my other mother. And I mean, I loved my mother profoundly and I hold her in great respect and, and, and there was a way she could not go where I needed to go at all. And so she was my launching pad. And for that, I mean, how could one not be profoundly grateful? But there was more to the world and more to spiritual life than my family could dream of. So and thank now my problem is, I must write this letter. I want to write this letter. And of course, all all of our all of the stuff you know that happened between us mm. comes up trying to find positive things and mm. humorous things and what I, am I going to say? may I be bold me <laughs> flush all that you could write her a, f a three line letter I love you. I'm really glad you were my. You've been my sister, and may your journey go well. Really, 
there's just no way to solve all those knots. So why not let go of them? That's what I'm trying to say is I want to forgive her and I hope she forgives me. So thank you very much, my dear. Good luck. <laughs> it's uh, almost time to go. Is there anybody else who would like to share something this morning? I'm having a line from Khalil Gibran on children come through. Your children are not your children. They are the fruits of life's longing for itself. They come through you, but they are not of you. And it goes on like that. Our parents are not our parents. They're people who played the role in this lifetime of parents. And our siblings played the role of siblings. But we're all just passing through. And how do we become more loving of everybody? Particularly ourselves, our, our flawed, um, challenged selves. Allison, the link went out in an email this morning <laughs> to the board meeting. Well, dear friends, lovely to be with you. I feel, s every day I feel comforted by our time together. This morning I feel like I've been uh, pulled back into sanity. It's quite lovely. So do have a fine day and um, may mindfulness go with you in every activity. So let's sing. Gonna open everybody up. Oh, oh, I do. Oh, there we are. <laughs> Hello there. May all beings be 